Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on severe bronchospasm during anesthesia. Bronchospasm is a reversible spasm of the bronchial smooth muscle resulting in narrowing of the airways. Status asthmaticus is intractable bronchospasm. Clinical features include wheezing, high airway pressures, reduced pulmonary compliance and reduced tidal volume, hypoxemia, hypercarbia, and a sloping expiratory capnograph trace. Risk factors include bronchial asthma, especially if there is previous acute emissions, especially to the ICU, and systemic steroid dependence. Respiratory tract infection and carinal irritation by the endotracheal tube can cause bronchospasm. Differential diagnosis, pulmonary aspiration, laryngospasm, pulmonary edema, pulmonary embolism, fat embolism, or amniotic fluid embolism, pneumothorax, anaphylaxis or anaphylactoid reactions, endobronchial intubation, ETT obstruction secondary to kinking, cuff herniation, secretions, foreign body, etc., and breathing circuit obstruction. Diagnosis Increased airway pressures, prolonged expiratory phase, sloping expiratory capnograph trace, trachea central, bilateral hyperexpanded lungs, resonant lung fields, expiratory wheeze and silent chest if severe. These indicate severe bronchospasm during anesthesia. Severe bronchospasm is a diagnosis of exclusion. To identify the cause of increased airway pressure, disconnect the breathing circuit distal to all connectors or filters and try to ventilate the endotracheal tube directly with a self-inflating bag. If the inflation pressure still feels too high, the problem is due to the airway or endotracheal tube obstruction or reduced compliance. Eliminate ETT obstruction by sounding the ETT with a graduated gum elastic bougie. Management Maintain oxygenation and ventilation. Ensure adequate airway. Administer 100% oxygen. Hand ventilate if artificial airway is in place to evaluate pulmonary compliance. If anesthesia is inadequate, deepen with propofol IV 20 to 50 mg followed by an increase in the concentration of the volatile agent provided that the patient is not hypotensive. Sevoflurane is the least irritating and unlikely to precipitate dysarrhythmias in the presence of hypercapnia. Auscultate the chest for bilateral breath sounds, wheezing may be present. Rule out ETT kinking or obstruction by secretions by passing a suction catheter or GEB down the ETT. Administer inhaled beta-2 agonists such as salbutamol via MDI or nebulizer. MDI salbutamol should be delivered 4 to 20 puffs per hour and to deliver it via a circuit, place the beta agonist inhaler into the barrel of a 50 ml syringe, attach the syringe via lower lock to a 15 cm length of fine ball infusion or capnograph tubing. Feed the tubing directly down the ETT and discharge the inhaler by pressure applied to the syringe plunger. Use of fine ball tubing decreases deposition of drug on the ETT. Nebulizer dose is 2.5 mg up to 5 mg every 15 minutes. Anticholinergic therapy. The use of ipratropium bromide is beneficial. It can be delivered by using MDI or nebulizer. The dose for MDI is 4 to 8 puffs every 15 minutes. For nebulizer, it is 0.25 mg up to 0.5 mg 4 to 6 hourly. Atropine IV 20 mics per kg or nebulize 2 mg or glycopyrrolate 10 mics per kg IV or nebulize 1 mg can be delivered. Consider IV bronchodilator therapy titrated to hemodynamic and bronchodilator response in severe bronchospasm. Salbutamol, IV 5 micrograms per kg over 20 minutes. Isoproterenol, 1 to 3 micrograms per minute. Adrenaline, IVI 2 to 8 mics per minute or IV boluses of 10 micrograms. Aminophylline, IV 250 milligrams by slow injection up to 5 milligrams per kg. IV ketamine, 2 milligrams per kg. And IV magnesium, 2 grams, slow bolus are options to consider. Steroids are indicated in acute asthma but takes time for onset of effect. Options include 
IV hydrocortisone 200 mg or IV methylprednisolone 40 mg 6 hourly. Ventilator settings to decrease the risk of air trapping and barrel trauma. In the presence of severe bronchospasm, IPPV can cause raised mean intrathoracic pressure, consider obstructed venous return and a dependent fall in cardiac output if pulse pressure falls and neck veins appear distended. Intermittently disconnect the ETT from the circuit and observe the connected capnograph trace for evidence of prolonged expiration and return of pulse pressure. Provide 100% oxygen and ventilate initially by hand. May need high pressures, slow respiratory rate and prolonged expiration to reduce air trapping. Maximize expiratory time. Adjust IE ratio and the respiratory rate. Start at the rate of 6 to 8 per minute. It may be necessary to accept a reduced ventilatory rate to allow adequate expiration to occur, i.e. permissive hypercapnia. Maintain peak inspiratory pressure less than 50 cmH2O. Pressure control ventilation allows for greater inspiratory flow, permits a longer expiratory time and decreases dynamic hyperinflation. Allow mild to moderate hypercapnia in order to achieve the above, provided SpO2 is adequate. Investigations include chest X-ray to look out for pneumothorax and to confirm the ETT tip position, arterial blood gases and electrolytes. For status asthmaticus, prolong ventilation with isoflurane or sevoflurane, heliox, which reduce airway resistance and extracorporeal membrane oxygenation if unable to oxygenate, are options for management. Identify and stop triggers and causes of bronchospasm Check the drug chart and notes for possible drug allergies to agents already administered. Refer for ICU care. These are my references. Thank you.